Hey, I got a strike. I got a strike. <laughs> I bet you it's a Mayan. <laughs> it's a Mayan. Not the Whopper we were all expecting. Welcome to another episode of Bassa with Captain Lou. Guys, today is a bank fishing edition. I know I haven't done these in quite some time, but I mean, I was compelled to do this video. Um, I just picked up this uh, new, new to me, this lure has been out for a little while, a Yozuri pencil popper. This actually happens to be the 135 floater. I mean, this thing is huge, guys. Check this out. This thing's a five and a half inch pencil popper. I mean, this is like the cousin of a spook, but it has this little concave mouth that makes the lure spit and, and, and do all these type of uh, actions. Um, I have put this, uh, this lure through its paces, as you guys are gonna see. I, I mean, I took it out bank fishing uh, yesterday evening, and I actually, as a nut, I mean, I actually woke up this morning editing video, and I went out again this morning because I just, I just felt that this thing was gonna catch me something. Uh, it didn't, fortunately, but I mean, I just, so you're gonna see probably some footage of from yesterday and today mixed in there. Um, as I break down this lure, I'm gonna break down um, thoughts, my initial, re my initial impressions about it, um, and show you guys the different ways I've worked it. I mean, how far I could cast it, what it can do. So nonetheless, guys, I hope you guys enjoy the video. I'm gonna come back after and, uh, and, and wrap things up, but uh, stick around, your story, pencil popper. All right, guys, here it is, the Yozuri Pencil Popper. It is the uh, 135 floater. This sucker's pretty big. It's over five inches long. It has some weight to it. Uh, as you guys can see here, I have it tied on with a 20-pound leader, tied with an FG knot. I got a Concept Z reel and a Sierra 735 with 40-pound braid. So what I, my goal today is I'm gonna take this, uh, this, this bait or this lure through its paces, show you guys what it can do, give you guys my initial impressions, and uh, if I catch something, it's a bonus. So stick around. But I can tell you right off the bat, this thing can cast a country mile. Walks fairly easy. I'm not putting much effort to it, and it does that nice side to side action and every time I pop it to the side it does this little spit. Again, just gonna walk the bank. Uh, this area, so you guys know, is known for nice size peacock, nice bass and snook. So we'll see if, uh, we'll see if any of those fish decide to come up and uh, give this bait a try. There's a peacock right, actually there's two big peacocks right now. It looks like it's a big peacock and a bass, actually. I coaxed up with all the noise. The peacock doesn't know if he wants to hit it or not. <laughs> it's too big. The profile may be too big. But he's there, though. He's thinking about it. I don't know if you guys can see it in the shot. It's about a pound, two pound peacock. I mean, I'm making a lot of noise. But that's a good sign, though. That's a good sign. Let's see what happens. He's there. He came up. Holy crap, he came up again. He just doesn't know if he wants to hit this big thing or not. Just one good whack. So the peacock, that little peacock is doing wide circles around. He doesn't know if he wants to hit it. But it's a good sign though, so I'm gonna keep working the bank. That was easily a nice 30 yard plus cast, no problem. Again, the lure walks pretty easy. A nice pop of the wrist and it's moving from side to side nice and lazy. It goes nice and slow every pop. The harder I snap the wrist, then it starts to spit. It does have some rattles inside. So you do hear it. So, so far so good. Let's see how it goes. So when it comes to locations like this, I have shot video from here before, a couple of my bank fishing videos from this location. Uh, this is a very low bank canal and there's a hydrilla line right down the side. So what I like doing in situations like this is I like taking nice long bombing cast and then work the hydrilla line and you come across these pockets in the hydrilla line where you could either have a nice peacock sitting inside of it or a bass and you just never know. So I just like to take advantage of the vegetation instead of casting over to uh, just into the open water and then just work my cadences accordingly until I, I narrow down the bite. So let's see how it goes. Something that you guys are gonna quickly notice here, I did do some, uh, I don't know about quickly notice, but I did do some changes to this lure. Um, I removed the middle hook. 
Um, I don't like big middle hooks on uh, baits like this. I like to have one in the end and one in the front. I just don't like that one. It's just another lever arm for them to throw something with, so I don't like it. And another thing I've been doing with a lot of the lures out of the package lately is I've been uh, reinforcing the, uh, the hardware, and in this case, it's split rings. Um, I, I matched it to the same size. It's just stainless steel, and it's a lot thicker. And the hooks out of the box was pretty stout, so I stayed with them. So um, let's see what happens. If you guys like to experiment with different types of lures, um, the one thing that I do a lot is when I'm experimenting is I only bring the lure that I'm experimenting so I don't have any temptation to try something else. So I'm just using this thing right here. There's nothing else I'm carrying. So if I lose this thing, I go home, basically. All I got is a pair of pliers, a scale just in case I catch a whopper, and that's it. I only bought one of these things. I don't have a bunch of other colors to try out. Um, albino is a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a decent staple for down here. It catches year round, so I don't think I need to go crazy with different colors. So when you wanna do things right, you just, uh, bring, just bring that lure that you're gonna test only. This thing does a complete 180 degrees when you pop it hard enough. That's pretty, that's pretty interesting. It'll go from vertical to 180 degrees on a hard pop. That's pretty cool. I'm impressed at how tight this thing can walk. I can go, I can go 180, 180 on each pop. Depending on the intensity of my pop, it goes 180, 180, 180, 180. One thing I am doing is trying to get used to the wake characteristics. You guys hear me talk about this a lot in my videos especially when you're fishing top water, is paying attention to the wake characteristics of lures. But since this, this thing does a 180 degrees, it drags water with it. So it has like a, a secondary wake, which makes it appear like if a fish is following it. But that's not the case. It's because of this bulbous end is just causing a secondary wake every time it flips to the 180. So it's throwing me off thinking there's a fish behind it. So here's what I'm basically doing to make it to make it walk, guys. I haven't spoken about that. So when it comes to walking a bait, uh, specifically this one, let's say, you just want to have a little bit of slack on the line, a little bit of slack, not too much, and just pop your wrist. And every time you give that a little snap, you'll see that the lure just moves from side to side, see? It just shimmies. Every time you do that, you just got to give it a little bit of slack at the tip. And then every to do that, you just do like a little quarter turn and it starts coming towards you and you just do little snaps. Let me get it closer for you guys so you can see. You can see you don't have to be so far away to do this. See? You give it a little bit of slack, just a little bit. Let me get a little lower for you guys. A little slack and just snap the wrist. Boom. And just pop the wrist in place. Pop the wrist. You're gonna, what's basically what you're doing is you're popping your wrist and bringing the rod tip towards you. So you're gonna pop the wrist as you bring the rod tip towards you, and that's gonna cause the nose to start turning on its side. If you have too much slack, then it's just gonna pop. But if you give it just enough slack, it's gonna be able to move freely from the nose. You see? And when it comes to these type of baits, it just comes down to practicing. I mean, there's so many videos out there as far as learning or teaching people how to walk a bait. But the main thing is just having the right amount of slack and just matching the cadence of the wrist snap with the retrieval or the turning of the handle. Once you time those little three things, it's, it becomes a piece of cake really. But I mean, you just gotta get on the water and practice. That's what it just boils down to. Oh, well, had a blow up. <laughs> had my foot at the edge of the had my foot at the edge of the of the bank there and I took a tumble on the hook set. Can you say ouch? <laughs> I'm telling you. The first significant strike of the outing. <laughs> and I fall trying to hook set. Too funny. I gotta be honest, I thought I was gonna come across a, uh, at least one. Oh, oh, look at the size of that. Oh, shh. I'm talking about coming across a big pea and a nice freaking bass just came out right now to investigate. Oh, that was a big freaking bass, folks. He just came out from the, from the bottom. 
and he went to the middle of the water column to check out what the noise was, but uh, he didn't commit. But I had a follower, and it was a freaking big one. Well, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this portion of the video. I like the bait. I mean, it moves nicely. It uh, pops and sachets and does all these nice, cool things. Uh, since I since I fish these type of lures a lot, not pencil poppers, but spooks and stuff like that, I can only begin to imagine the blow up this thing is gonna get. Um, unfortunately, I didn't come across anything. I mean, I did summon a nice big bass to come up to investigate, but it just didn't do anything. I would have thought maybe some peacocks would have tangled with it, but they didn't either. So all in all, I mean, it was a good review of the bait. I, I really enjoyed it. Unfortunately, there was no fish catches for you guys on the video. Stick around and I'll do a final wrap up in a little bit. So as you guys can see, that was quite the bank fishing adventure. I was not expecting to take a tumble like that. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm okay, but my foot was on the edge of the, of the bank. Whatever struck, I went to hook set and down I went. So you just never know what's gonna happen when you're bank fishing. I did include some footage from this morning. There was some activity, but nothing significant. I, I, I didn't get skunked. I actually caught, like you guys saw, this little Mayan cichlid. It is what it is. And then of course, as I'm walking back, I see a school of peacock bass, nothing big, and then a, a decent sized snook. But again, once I throw this big thing, they did not want anything to do with, deal with this thing. So it is what it is. But as you guys can see, I mean, this is a very big profile bait. So when you're throwing this thing, you are targeting big fish. I mean, you're targeting big peacock, big large mouth. I mean, in our waters, you could probably get, you know, some baby tarpon and some snook with this thing. So, I mean, this is, this is a big fish attractor. I like it a lot. You guys are gonna see this, this, this lure a lot in a lot of my future videos. So uh, keep an eye out for it. But with that said, guys, I appreciate you guys for watching the video. Like the video, share the video. Better you just become part of the community. It, it's growing. I'm approaching 200 subscribers. Uh, the channel is gonna, it's gonna hit its anniversary uh, this upcoming summer. Um, so, I mean, I'm excited that it's growing and thanks for you guys. Thank you guys for taking the time. I appreciate many of you for the comments that you've left me. Um, they're very helpful. I take that as very constructive to help me become a better content creator for you guys. And with that said, I want to open the floor. I mean, as you guys can see, I don't bite. Um, I love interacting with you guys when you guys uh, pose questions. So if you have questions about South Florida bass fishing, bank fishing, Everglades fishing, or anything like that, peacocks, largemouth, ask your questions. I would love to share with you guys, love to teach you guys. If you guys have any uh, uh, video ideas that you guys want to see specifically on topics that people haven't talked about, about gear, about how to fish certain things in certain applications in certain situations, feel free to ask. If I can do it, I will, I will shoot the video for you guys specifically just for you guys. How's that? So that's how serious I am in growing the community. But again, guys, I really do appreciate you guys taking the time and watching my content. It does mean a lot. Uh, I got some Everglades trips coming up and uh, hopefully I could get the camera on board. Uh, I do got some guy trips that I, I usually don't film my guy trips, but uh, I'm, I'm trying to get as much footage as I can to share with you guys because the fishing is so good right now. But again, thank you guys for watching and uh, we'll be seeing each other again soon.